So the plan for today and for the next video in two weeks is to do a little beginner's project. My first ever item that I sewed completely from scratch by myself was a cloak. In fact, it was this cloak. I made this over 10 years ago now. It's really messy on the inside and on the outside for that matter, but I still love it. I still wear it regularly as part of a costume. And I might be biased, but I think that they're a fantastic place for anyone to start sewing. So to that end, I've got two designs for cloaks and I really hope that they can inspire you to start on a sewing journey. So the cloak that I'm making this week is a semicircle cloak that has been worn historically through many periods and you can adjust the material or the hood of it to make it look more historical or less historical. The way that I've done it is a very medieval type look. It's made from wool and it's got a pointed hood, but you can mix and match with the hood from the one from the next video, which would bring it forward a little bit, or use a different type of material like silk or cotton, which would also bring it forward a little bit. It does take quite a lot of material, so it is more on the expensive side. The one that I'm doing in two weeks uses a lot less material, so that would be cheaper to make. But enough rambling, let's get on with the sewing! So the first step is to measure out a rectangle that when folded in half forms two squares. The length of these squares need to be the length of your cloak. I'm going selvage to selvage or edge to edge, which is 150 centimeters. So my rectangle was three meters, folded in half to make two squares of 150 centimeters by 150 centimeters. Rather than getting out my tape measure, I found the right length by pulling one corner up to the selvage and using that to mark the midpoint of my rectangle. With the fabric folded over on the midpoint of the rectangle, you need to make a compass to measure out the semicircle for the body of the cloak. Pin a piece of string to one corner and to the other side, lining up with the far edge, tie either a chalk pencil or a chalk wheel. I don't recommend one of the Taylor's chalk triangles just because they're fairly difficult to tie down. You might also need to weigh down the pinned edge of the fabric to stop it from lifting. In this case, put something heavy right on the corner to disrupt the string as little as possible. I just grabbed our box of potatoes from the kitchen, but a heavy book would probably work pretty well as well. So then to draw your circle, you just need to keep that string taut and pull your chalk device, whatever you're using, to mark your circle round so you get a nice smooth line. And then it's just onto the snippy snippy time. So grab your scissors, cut that out nice and simple. Keep to one side the piece that's come off the cut edge that's got that curve on because we'll want that later to make a hood. Now at this stage, if you're using any sort of fabric that will fray, like this wool, you want to do something to secure the edge before you continue. Because the edge is cut on the bias that is on a diagonal across the weave, you should hang this before you finish the edge properly, but I knew I wouldn't have time to do so, so at this stage I put my hem in place. If you do have time, then using a zigzag stitch along the edge or serging, if you have a serger available, will work perfectly well. Instead, I went ahead with a double fold hem. So here I'm folding the raw edge over once and then once again to hide that raw edge inside the folds. And to mark the neck hole, you need to go back to that corner where you originally had the compass in. You can make another compass if you want, but I find it easier to do it with a tape measure because this is just a very small circle. So I use 15 centimeters for the radius of my semicircle, which gives you a neck hole of about 50 centimeters, but you can add or take away from that if necessary. If you want to be more precise, measure around your neck, then divide that by pi. That should give you the diameter, but as we're working with semicircles here, using it as a radius instead works pretty well. And when you're happy with your semicircle, then just snippy snippy that again. And then it's back to the hood. Fold your saved piece from cutting it out in half and pin along the straight edge. Measure the curved edge from the fold to the height that you want your hood. And from there, measure your neck hole length across to the straight edge. So I measured 40 centimeters down the curved edge 
and across 15 centimeters and then cut it off with a little bit of excess. With that done, we also need to secure the neck hole that we cut. So I've just chucked that under the machine on a zigzag stitch. At this stage, I also tack down the pinned hem to get rid of and free up a couple of pins. Tacking is just a straight running stitch with a large stitch length, so it's easy to unpick later. You can't see it particularly well here, but you might notice later I'm using a different type of pin than normal for this project. This wool is so thick and the weave is so loose that I needed to use long, large headed pins that I usually use for wigs. So that's something to bear in mind if you're gathering materials for this project. Okay, and now we're finally on to doing some actual seams, of which there are a grand total of two, except they're being done as French seams, so there's actually four. So this first seam is sewing along that straight edge of the hood, just all the way down on a running stitch. Because it's a French seam, it needs to be wrong side to wrong side, so the seam is visible from the fashion side of the fabric. In this case, my fabric didn't have a right side or a wrong side, so I just decided which was the right side and the wrong side to begin with and stuck to that way around the whole way through. And the next step is to press it because you always press your seams. It's a lesson that I learned very late on in sewing and I really want to impress how important it is and what a big difference it makes, I promise. If you're ironing wool, make sure you check what temperature you can have your iron on before you start pressing. I will show an example of this in the next video. Once you've pressed your seam, you need to trim down the excess allowance. So just snippy snip all the way down. And then flip it round so it's wrong side to wrong side. This is the way that you normally would sew a seam. Pin that in place and then just chuck it through the sewing machine again. Now when you put it through the machine for the second time, what you're trying to do is enclose the raw edges from the first seam inside your second seam. So you want to sew as close to those raw edges as you can, but you need to make sure not to catch them. And once you've turned your seam the second time, then that needs to be pressed again. So it's back to the ironing board. You can see on the side of the ironing board here, a little bamboo tool next to my scissors. That's what I used to turning out points. It's specifically designed for that. If you don't have that, a pencil can do. Obviously be careful with it. You don't wanna push it through your fabric by accident and try and make sure it's not something that's gonna leave a mark on your fabric. So if you're using white fabric, then be careful about that. The next job is to line your hood up with your cloak and the neck hole that you cut earlier. I theft around doing this for ages and then realised a much better way to do it. So you can watch this and do as I say, not what I do. Take the piece of fabric that you cut from your cloak earlier, lay that against your hood, draw around it. There you go, you have a nice matching circle so you can pin them together. Congratulations, you're doing better than I am. Once you have your hood cut off in the same shape as your collar, you can pin those together. Again, we're doing a French seam, so we're doing wrong sides to wrong sides. and back to the sewing machine with a nice running stitch to hold those two together. Mm -hmm. 
onto that zone, we're going to press that out again. Trim the excess again. Flip it over and pin it once more so we've got that French seam with the raw seams enclosed inside again. And then for me this was the final seam on the machine, just finishing off that French seam with another running stitch. Again as close as you can to the raw edges without catching them in it. And once that's done, you're onto the eternal hemming. Now, if you're doing this properly, what you should do at this stage is find something to hang your cloak on and leave it there forever. Or at least for a couple of days until anything that's going to stretch out is stretched out. And then you can check the edges, make sure it's still a nice circle, cut off anything that's stretched out and then fold your hem over as I did earlier. So fold it over once and then fold it over again. You can also include the hood in that now. So it's hemmed all the way around the whole piece. This is going to take you a while, trust me. So once again, I tacked mine down. If you're gonna do your hem by machine, then what you need to do is a running stitch as close to the edge of the hem as you can. This will take you a while, but significantly less time than it will do by hand. I'm an idiot who did it by hand. I say that, but it looks incredible by hand. That's the reason you do it by hand that makes the hem basically in invisible from the outside on this fabric anyway. So it is definitely worth doing by hand. You just will be there for a while. Now to do the corners, I do my fake metering. There is another way to do this, but this is the way that I do it. I cut off the corner and then fold that cut edge up and then turn the edges over and they meet up nicely in the middle. Again, if this isn't clear enough because I was working rushed and in the dark, there is a better example, or slightly better example anyway, in the apron video that I put up. And then finishing the hem. So for this, the best stitch to use is a whip stitch. So what you're trying to do is catch as little of the material that was shown on the outside as possible and then anchoring it on the hem. So in this case, I'm catching one thread from the main fabric and then popping it through the edge of the hem. And you just need to continue that all the way around. This took me about 12 hours by hand. And then there was some more hemming the next day, as you can tell by the light change. And some more hemming. But I was getting somewhere at this stage. But eventually I met myself on the other end and the cloak was hemmed. And then it was just a case of pulling out my tacking stitches and doing something to secure it. Now this is based off not a lot of research and there is another method going up in the next episode which is easier. But this is me doing this literally on Christmas morning with what I had available based off some vague research that I've seen and something that I knew that I vaguely wanted to try. So for a large weft fabric, this actually works quite well. So what I've done is taken a thin piece of leather and cut two holes in it. I didn't measure these out, I just did them roughly to size. 
and then I've sewn that piece of leather to a scrap piece of the material. With that done, I've then rolled the edges over so there's no raw edges. then sewn that down to the inside of the cloak so that the leather is in between the two pieces of wool and not visible. The reason I used the leather is because I wanted something that wouldn't tear that would hold the weight. I then used an owl to open up holes through the leather and through the two layers of wool. This is then secured down with a buttonhole stitch, which unfortunately I don't have images of, which then allows me to slip the piece of leather through and it's repeated over on the other side. So I've got two pieces of leather that can be tied together to hold the cloak down. And that's it, the whole thing is done. So despite the insane rush on the end of this project, I'm so happy with how this came out. I kind of wish I could have kept it for myself. I just love swishing around with it, as you can see. My brother-in-law was really happy with it. He immediately put it on and started swishing around in it as well. So it's not just me who loves to swish around in them. I'm pretty sure everyone can benefit from this as a starting project and start to build up your confidence level as well. And you know, who doesn't want a cape? Who doesn't want a cloak? Everyone wants a cloak. My question for the day is, what was the first thing that you sewed? either completely or the first time that you picked up a needle, whichever. If you haven't sewn already, then what do you want to be the first thing that you're going to sew? Good luck with it. As normal, if you enjoyed this video, please think about giving me a like and subscribe if you haven't done already. And I'll see you in two weeks for the second cloak as the second half of this very mini series. So thank you for watching and I'll speak to you again then.